In this video, we'll be talking about the central nervous system. Now, this series of slides, uh, chapter 12a, the first slides are, uh, are mostly developmental. So we'll, as I said in class, the central nervous system is um, the brain and the spinal cord. It's really in the head and the back. Um, when we look at the rest of these slides here, these are all developmental. And while it's very interesting and helps you understand, we're not going to be covering it. Um, it's not part of the curriculum, developmental aspects of anything really. So all of these slides, uh, if you want to read them on your own and talk to me about them, I have no, no qualms about doing that, but it's not testable material. In the adult brain, uh, which is what we're going to be talking about first, there are various regions. There's the hemispheres, the cerebral hemispheres. Those are the things that you first note when you look at a brain. It's the wrinkly bits. There's the diencephalon, which is kind of the in the center, it's the deep primitive part of the brain. There's the brain stem, which consists of the midbrain pons and medulla. A lot of the autonomic stuff happens there. And the cerebellum, uh, which is kind of the cauliflower at the, the back of the brain. So it looks like this. The cerebral hemispheres are this, this wrinkly bit. The diencephalon is where the thalamus and the hypothalamus, etc., cetera, are. Uh, the brain stem controls the um, automatic bits, breathing and that kind of stuff, and the cerebellum, which is kind of quality control for the brain. The spinal cord is, uh, is found running up and down. Uh, the vertebral foramen, so it's it's found surrounded by bone, uh, by vertebrae. It's a hollow cord. Uh, there's a central cavity, and uh, the gray matter, the integrated part, the, uh, is found in the center, and then the white matter, the tracks, are uh, found around the outside. The white matter is myelinated, the gray matter is not myelinated. The brain oh, has gray matter on the outside uh, there, and it is hollow and, and filled with fluid. Uh, we'll just kind of leave it at that. We'll come back to it in a minute. Really, there is a transition between the spinal cord and the brain. The spinal cord being down here with gray matter in the center, a small central cavity. In the brain stem, it looks a lot like the spinal cord. Gray matter in the center, some nuclei out, white matter higher. As we get higher into the brain stem, we start to get some a cortex of gray matter until we get all the way up to this. Uh, cerebrum, which the cortex is all gray matter. As I said, the brain is hollow. Uh, it's filled with cerebral spinal fluid, and the hollow spaces are called ventricles. They're all connected to one another. Fluid that's in one of the ventricles will pass into the other ventricles. Uh, and then down the central canal of the spinal cord. And the lining of the ventricles and the central canal are all, uh, are all glial cells, the epidymal cells, the ones that look like they are uh, epithelial cells, but they really have neural origin. In the brain itself, the ventricles, there's two that are in each hemisphere, left and right, and they're kind of C-shaped, so we call these the lateral ventricles. There's a third ventricle in the diencephalon, and the fourth ventricle is in the brainstem. 
Uh, so, uh, and then that is continuous with the central canal of the spinal cord. This is what it ends up looking like. These are the lateral ventricles, the third ventricle, and the fourth ventricle. Looking at it from the side, lateral, lateral, third, and fourth. Um, the kind of the pathway that the liquid flows between the third and the fourth ventricle is called the cerebral aqueduct here. So we'll start out with the cerebral hemispheres. The first thing that you note is that um, there are all kinds of grooves. There's deep grooves and there's shallow grooves, so that leaves kind of ridges. We, we call each ridge a gyrus, plural is gyri. Uh, each shallow groove is a sulcus, plural sulci. And there are some really deep grooves that are called fissures that divide the cerebral hemispheres into lobes. And we end up with five lobes, frontal, parietal, temporal, occipital. And the one that everybody is, doesn't know that much about, it's called the insula. Um, because you don't see it from the surface, uh, it, it, we, it, it's kind of deep. Um, we'll see it in a second. Most people forget about that one. It's a very important one. The brain is divided uh, front to back by a, a sulcus called the central sulcus. Uh, there's a precentral gyrus and a postcentral gyrus that that are in either side of that central sulcus. There's a fissure that separates the two hemispheres, um, left and right hemispheres. There is a transverse cerebral fissure that separates the cerebrum from the cerebellum. So it ends up looking like this. Um, that this is the frontal lobe, the central sulcus, precentral gyrus, postcentral gyrus. This is the parietal lobe. This is the occipital lobe. This is the temporal lobe. And deep under here, behind the temporal lobe, is the insula. Uh, there is a, a fissure here. Right. There's um, the, Each of the lobes is really named for the bone that sits on top of it. So frontal lobe is covered by the frontal bone, parietal bone, occipital bone, temporal bone. If you pull the, the temporal lobe back and pull the frontal lobe up, you will see the insula kind of behind there. Photograph of a of a brain. This side of the brain still has uh, some of the meninges intact and the blood vessels. This side has been stripped of it. Uh, so this is the right hemisphere. This is the left hemisphere. Um, yeah. Again, this is with some of the meninges intact, the covering intact. Um, the transverse fissure is here, temporal lobe, occipital lobe, parietal lobe, frontal lobe. So in the entire cerebrum, all the, the gyri and the sulci have got a thin layer of gray matter that surrounds it, that's on the outside, and that's called the cortex, the cerebral cortex. It makes up quite a bit of the brain, almost half 
about 40% of the mass of the brain. And what happens in the cerebral cortex is this is where your consciousness is. This is where your mind uh, perception happens in here. Voluntary motor, memory, understanding. This is the part of the brain that your intellect resides in. Um, the hemispheres roughly mirror each other and each hemisphere uh, controls the contralateral side of the body. So that means the left hemisphere in the, say, the motor, the somatic motor portion controls the right arm and the right leg where the right hemisphere would control the left arm and the left leg. So somebody that has a stroke in the right hemisphere would lose the use of the left side of their body. So in this cortex, there are areas that are devoted to motor and control voluntary movement. So that would be the, the motor cortex. There are areas that are uh, devoted to sensory. And so that gives you awareness of sensations. So uh, touch and sound and all kinds of sensations, special senses, everything come to these sensory areas. And probably the m hardest to understand, but the most important bit are the association areas. And these are the areas that integrate diverse information. So that, um, for instance, if you, if you, your sensory areas for hearing pick up purring, and your touch is fur, it feels like fur, and your um, your visual sees kind of pointy ears and whiskers and eyes, all of those sensations get brought together in an area that you associate with a cat. And the association areas are really learned uh, places. You associate uh, the sensations with, with, with what this diverse group of uh, sensory inputs give you. Um, and they really are learned associations. And the more you see it, the more the, the, the association is made. Before I move away from that, I often think of uh, an example of, of this would be things that we associate to be food and things that we don't associate to be food. Like if you watch, uh, if you watch documentaries and you see Australian Aborigines eating grubs, we find it kind of gross. But they make the association with with food um, because they have learned that association. In the motor areas, there is the primary motor area, and then there's the premotor cortex, and then there's some other areas, Broca's and frontal eye field. But really, the premotor cortex and the, the primary motor cortex work together. And they are found here. They are found in the frontal lobe, the the precentral gyrus here is the primary motor cortex. And the the gyrus in front of that is really um, the premotor cortex. Right here is the eye field, and right here is Broca's area, um, and they're involved with complex movements. But basically, what this is, is where you decide what you're going to do, and then this carries out and sends signals to the appropriate muscles 
at the appropriate time for the appropriate duration. Um, this stuff here, the prefrontal cortex here, is where a lot of memory is stored, uh, right in through here. This part of the brain is called the executive area. This is for task management. Uh, this is, uh, is for object recall and multitask and, and complex problems are all right here, right above your eyes. It's one of the reasons why we kind of rub our foreheads when we're trying to solve a complex problem. I don't know how it helps, but uh, I think it's an awareness that, that it's there. Um, they say here the executive area is one of the last parts of the brain to actually develop uh, a lot. It's often not until you're in your 20s that you start to develop much activity in the executive area. So it's one of the reasons kids have such uh, difficulty staying on task or managing priorities. Um, and there's a lot of people uh, that actually have trouble with this, like adults that, that have trouble with this executive area. Now, behind the central sulcus is the sensory areas. So, so the somatosensory cortex is right along here. Uh, with the bottom part right below the ear is the, uh, the auditory portion here. Um, the the, uh, the association areas all surround back in here. The primary visual cortex is here. The visual association area is here. So this gets information from your eyes. This makes lets you make sense of the information that you get with your eyes. This gets information from the muscle stretch receptors and and touch and things like that. This lets you make sense of that. Okay. Gustatory taste is underneath here in the insula. So right in here is the auditory association area. And we probably bring everything from the association areas and, and integrate it all in this, this area. So all of this kind of lavender colored stuff is, is association from various inputs. Uh, so this is where we process. So what something smells like, sounds like, feels like, looks like, yeah. all get associated in here. So I'm not going to worry about the type of cells that are in the precentral gyrite, the motor cortex. Um, but it, it is the beginning of long fibers, of myelinated fibers, that go right down into the spine, and they're called the corticospinal tracts because they come from the primary motor cortex and they go to the spine. And there, they synapse with the lower motor neurons and go out into the periphery. This is all about precise movement, voluntary movement. Um, and each part of the primary motor cortex is associated with different groups of muscles and, and the precise movement of those muscles. And this picture here is a 
fairly famous picture. It's called the homunculi. Um, it's called the uh, somatic motor homunculi, actually. And it allows you to see how much of the cortex is actually devoted to each area. You'll notice that the face, lips, jaw, and tongue have a huge amount of cortex. Uh, the hands and the fingers have a huge amount, right? Where wrist, elbow, arm, shoulder, trunk, hips really don't have near as much. Uh, and now this is in a normal adult human. Somebody that, because of the idea of brain plasticity, this can change. Uh, and we can start using these parts for other things. Like if, So if you lost your hand, uh, or if you never had a hand, you would make up for it. There is a, there's an artist that paints with his feet. I'm sure that his motor cortex for his manipulating his feet is quite large and not just this little bit here in the in the uh, central fissure. This, by the way, is the insula. Um, your tongue has got quite a bit. This is what allows you to speak. Okay, so the premotor cortex is repetitive, pattern motor skills. Um, athletes develop a lot in the premotor cortex. So you don't think about catching a ball as what you're going to do with each of the muscles. You think, I'm just going to catch the ball, and there's a pattern will happen. Um, so the sequential aspects of it all just follow. Um, yeah, and we'll just kind of leave it at that. The premotor cortex plans what's going to happen. The primary motor cortex makes it happen. In Broca's area, which is one of the few areas that we're actually going to talk about, um, is a speech area, directs the muscles of the tongue. Uh, it allows speech to happen. Um, I had a, a patient years ago who was in a boating accident and had part of his parietal lobe on the left taken out by the propeller of a, a boat while he was water skiing. Um, while he was in the water after water skiing, he got run over. And Broca's area was damaged. And the only thing he could say was yes. But he could say it with inflection. So if you asked him how he was doing, he'd say yes, if it was good. And if he, if he wasn't so good, he'd say, oh, yes. So he, it was interesting to communicate with the guy. The other interesting thing about that guy is because it was Broca's area that was damaged, he couldn't form speech very effectively, but he could write with his left hand. He could write in full sentences with proper punctuation. Uh, so his ability to think wasn't damaged. His ability to form the words was. The frontal life field is really a large uh, part of the of this premotor cortex and it's about controlling eye movement you can imagine that as visual creatures we we rely a lot on vision and so therefore we have to very much control very precisely eye movement uh, Yeah, and it's it, and this is the area that does it.